Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Game Points episode 272. Your weekly get together, we talk about recent gaming news. I'm as always your host, Stephen Brown, and joining me today is. I'm David. Tonight, David, the Steam Deck just comes out of nowhere. Tencent cannot be trusted. And what the hell is X Defiant? But first, I want everyone here to know that this is an audience interactive podcast. So if you're watching us here live, at twitch.tv slash gamepoints or later over at youtube.com slash gamepointspc. Feel free to join in the conversation. So that are questions, comments, concerns, etc. you might have. Just try to keep them germane to the conversation. Ninja Wolf Game, Ninja Wolf, good to have you already in the chat and everyone else who is lurking as well. David? Yes. We missed you last week. I said you were out down in Cuba fighting some revolution. I didn't know what side you were picking, but I just said, kept it ambiguous saying you were down there. I noticed that you're not very tan, though, so it must have been overcast. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I actually did get sunburnt last weekend. So, <laughs> uh, Well, it's good to see that you're safe and sound, and I hope that you picked the right side. Um, we'll yeah. just leave it at that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Normally, I'd ask you what you've been up to, what your games you've been playing, and everything like that. But honestly... It, I've been playing a game. You know oh, have about you? it? No. Yeah, it's really old. It's great. <laughs> what What have you been playing? I finally, yes, everyone, I am the gamer that plays games on time, started playing the first Spider-Man on PS4. Oh, that game is great. That game is it's, amazing. It's so good. Not not to go off on the Spider-Man tangent, but I re what I really appreciate about that game is that it is not an origin story. Yes, that and is he, great. Yeah, he's like he's like twenty six. He's out of college. We get it. We we know what's going on. Yeah, I really really enjoy that about that Insomniac Spider Man. Really looking forward to the next one. I'm told Miles Morales is also amazing. I haven't sat down and played that one yet, but I, I just moving yep. in that city is one of the most joyful experiences I've had in gaming in a long time. It feels it, really good to traverse the city in that game. It's quite satisfying. It's also fun how busy New York is. Yeah, it, it actually like, is for an open Playing Spider-Man is putting me in perspective for all the people that were super mad at Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, like, I, I can see that. My streams are doing things, and there's cars everywhere, and it works, and whatever. That's fine. But that game's fun. I like it. Good job, guys, that made a game, like, four years ago that I finally played. Yeah, no, and it is a great game. It was probably my favorite one that year. I can't quite remember if it was that or something else, but it was definitely up there. I'm, like, half -ish done, probably. We'll see. Let's go ahead and start off with what is arguably the biggest story this week, and that is the Steam Deck. That is yes. Valve's long rumored handheld that they were designing, built to be the world's most powerful handheld gaming device. It was officially announced late last week, immediately went up for pre orders, and so many people tried to log up at the same time, they actually crashed Steam's servers, which is yes. insane. Uh, Ninja Wolf in chat asks, why does the Steam Deck look like Nintendo Switch? Because it looks... Because that design works. Uh, Stealthy Twitchy, good to have you, saying it looks like the Switch Pro. Yes, uh, that's something else I saw going around, is that finally Gabe Newell pulled a Thanos and finally looked at Nintendo and said, well, if you're not going to make a Switch Pro, I'll just do it myself. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's a handheld. It looks like a Game Gear. It's great. It does look uh, like I, a Game Gear. I can't... You're right. It, I get strong, strong Game Gear yeah. vibes from it. It's 100% a Game Gear, uh, especially because of the button placement. Like, the buttons and the and the D-pad are way at, like, the top of the handheld. Now, I... This is one of those Which things... Go ahead. I actually think is going to be incredibly uncomfortable, and I dislike it immensely. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, it's still I, neat. I want to actually hold one. Because have you used the Steam controller? Yes, I have. Evernomics is not what Valve does well. That Steam controller feels almost cheap and toy-like, and nothing about it feels good in my hand. And I'm afraid that the Steam Deck is going to give the same kind of feeling, that it just feels like I'm going to break it. You got to wear a lanyard with it. Yeah, but that could possibly be my only complaint about it. Why don't you go ahead and give us the tech specs on this, David, since you know the hardware side more than I do. Cool. I will give you the slightly nerdy breakdown, and then I will tell you what that means because I don't really want to get into all the numbers because it's not as fun. <laughs> so we've got the Steam Deck. It's got a 7-inch diagonal screen that's going to be running at 1,200 by 800 pixels, which means it's in the uh, not perfect 16 by 10 resolution, not 16 by 9, but uh, there we go. It is what it is. It's running at 60 hertz. <laughs> it's got a custom-built AMD APU Zen 2. Um, it's... 
it's basically the chip that's powering all the next gen consoles, but built for this thing. Okay. 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, it can be clocked, all that other fun stuff. But it's it's the same thing that everybody else is using. It's the new hotness. It's going to be great. Uh, 8 RDNA, 2 CUs, blah, 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 16 gigs, LPD, DDR5 RAM. This is just a lot of stuff to tell you guys that this game is, go or this thing is going to run games on your handheld pretty smoothly. Yeah, it sounds like they're shooting for a PS4 to 5 slash Xbox Series X. You are going equivalent. to play games in 720p resolution, and they're going to run pretty damn well. Um, the resolution won't matter too much considering the things in your hand. And yeah, you actually I... don't really want a handheld at like 1080p or 4K because then you couldn't read anything. I'd imagine that's where they're able that. to cut corners on the cost here is that since they don't have to worry about such a high resolution, they can focus more on just stability. Yep. Um, it does come in three different flavors, as it were. It has a base 64 gig model, a 256 gig model, and a 512 gig model. Keep in mind that the two larger sizes are SSDs. Um, the lower cost one will have a slower uh, drive. It also has a micro SD slot, nothing proprietary. So there you go, another nail in the Vita's coffin. It has a headphone jack, which it's a video game console, so why not? That's great. Good job, guys. Yeah, fuck uh, it you, comes Apple. with. Well, it's not a phone. Whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. It's, it's the Switch cool. has a headphone jack. Yeah, well, fuck you, Apple, still. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. uh, it has a reported eight hour battery life, which is much better than the Switch's, what, three, three to six, I think is what they were touting before that thing came out. I'd be curious to know if this is like the battery's rated maximum. Or if this is what average is going to be. Because those could be two wildly different numbers. Correct. But even if this is the maximum, it's still a bigger maximum than the purported specs of the Switch. Okay. Which is supposed to max out at six hours while playing Breath of the Wild. Uh, it has four assignable grip buttons on the back side. So if you're used to any of those elite style controllers, you got some stuff out there. Two full size analog sticks, capacitive touch, two of the square track pads that valve has been a big fan of that originally debuted in the steam controller that we talked about but if you're not aware they also use those haptic feedbacks to great success for the valve index controllers that's how you can how the system can tell if you're you know okay you need to make a okay. fist or, you know or i your actually hands open or closed when i was reading these tech specs i kept thinking about the steam controller and because i hate that steam controller i'm not a fan of it at all but I forgot that between the Steam controller and this was that Valve in was that index. Yes, and the controls for the Valve Index are incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. It also has a USB-C with the display DisplayPort 1.4 alt mode support that allows for output of the system up to 8K at 60 hertz or 4K at 120 hertz, USB 3.2 Gen 2. And that's pretty exciting because it's dockable. It is running Steam OS, which is kind of a modified version of Linux. And it's going to still be able to play a lot of Windows games. One thing of note, at this time, any game that runs a cheat engine or an anti-cheat software is not compatible with the Steam Deck because... Those are specifically Windows programs. This thing runs Linux, and they're not compatible at the time. However, this thing doesn't come out till December, so I'm willing to bet they'll get that worked out in the meantime. Um, it starts at $399 for the 64 gig model, jumping to $529 for $256, and $649 for $512. Storage size and speed are the only real differences, keeping in mind that all of them do have the option for just a regular micro SD. So, What do you think you about go. those price points? Because you hear $399, and that sounds amazing that sounds aggressive that sounds like they're eating cost on it almost well considering the fact that this is a bonafide cheap gaming pc yeah four hundred dollars absolutely that, that's exactly what it is you can right you can plug this into the dock that they have announced that will be available it has not gone on sales yet and when it's docked the actual Steam Deck itself will function as a second screen while you have the thing plugged into like a monitor or a TV and you're playing games on it. God damn, that's I, this. This sounds really cool. A stealthy Twitch in chat saying that the dock illustration is showing an Ethernet port, multiple USB C ports, and an HDMI port. Yeah, just to kind of get some more information on that. And orders are to start shipping in December of 2021. No firm release date, but 
here's something that I liked. All last year, we had all this new hardware come out, from graphics cards to the new consoles, and it was a complete and utter shit show because they all dropped all at once mm -hmm. on every single website and platform where things are sold, and they were all scooped up instantly by scalpers with bots. Steam, uh, I'm sorry, Valve, in their steamy wisdom, when they put these up for pre-order, the only way to be eligible to purchase the Steam Deck is through Steam with your Valve account, and you have to have made a purchase on that account prior to June. That's amazing. I didn't know that. So you couldn't just if create... You did, if you make a Steam account and try to buy a Steam Deck, they say, sorry, bro, try again later. And that's one of those things see i i think it worked pretty damn well because everyone that i know personally that wanted to get a steam deck has a reservation for a steam that's deck. amazing that's it cool. might be that's it might be q2 next year and not december but everybody i know that wanted one managed to get in line no that's really really cool uh which i cannot say about anything else uh let's see rock bogart says he got one listed as quarter one so go you uh, stuff at Twitch and chat says Valve should have locked the Steam user account for device for 90 days, preventing the 2K pre-sales on eBay. I have um, heard about these pre-sales. So the fun thing is that those pre-sales don't matter because part of eBay's policy is that anything that you have up has to be sold and shippable within 30 days. So those are all going to get pulled anyway. So uh, in fact, Rock Bogart and chat's already saying they announced they're taking them down. So yeah, those things are uh, being handled. That's, that's not going to work. But I, I do like the idea that they should be locked to a Steam account or, or, or something like that for a little while after release so that no one can try and poach these things until, you know, the middle of next year. So I got a couple um, of thoughts on this, but I want you, I want your opinion on this first, because my thoughts really aren't so much about the Steam Deck as much as just like things about this rollout. What do you think of this thing? Is this something that you have an interest in? What What's your opinion? What, I want to know what your general vibe on this is. I would rather have this than the Switch. The only thing the Switch has is first-party Nintendo games on this. And as we've talked about before, the only thing I use my Switch for are indie games and roguelikes. That, that's my go-to. I'm going to play something fun, you know, like uh, more arcade styling racing games. This is where I played Hollow Knight. This is where I played Dead Cells. This is where I played, you know, whatever, man. It's, it's, it's in my hands. This is a better version of that. Would you rather have this than a gaming laptop? Yes. Yeah, I, I think I'm in that boat too. Just because for the it's convenience it's factor. more portable, it's more convenient, and you can still plug it into a dock and have it hooked up to a monitor. This is an awesome thing for someone that doesn't have a gaming computer. If you have like a, a game console and you wanted to get a PC or you wanted to build a PC, something that's been completely and utterly impossible for the last year and a half, this is this is your option. So now you're not going to get. 4K, 120 hertz, 144 hertz gaming out of it. It's not going to be your, you know, hardcore, crazy looking, beautiful AAA game machine. But if you play just competitive games, which have very well optimized performance ratios so that they work on just about every damn thing, this is perfect for that. If you it just want to play smaller indie games, like... this is perfect for that. If you want to just play games on the go, but you want access to your full Steam library and everything that's on the epic store which they've already announced that they're supporting you could just get one of these things that's cool too i didn't know that this sounds like the equivalent uh that they're making it spec wise the equivalent of like a current generation console yeah for a Except for it's a current price. generation console that if i bought one i would immediately have access to half of a thousand games because that's how fucking big my steam library is so I have I have one question I want to bring up with you real quick, and I think I already know the answer to it, but I did do my due diligence on it. I want to see if you might either know or just have a gut reaction to it. Yes. In the past, when it comes to like consoles, Steam has not had the best track record because we all barely remember the Steam machine. Correct. It came and support dropped real quick. Do you think that this might suffer that same fate? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I tend not to do so either because, because the Steam machine was a cool proof of concept that they never put their hardware dev team on. Yes, if it you was remember, licensed. All the I Steam believe. machines were partnered out and licensed and built third party, and there wasn't really a huge audience of people that desperately needed a living room PC that could hook into their TV that didn't already make their own. Yeah. 
this feels a completely different use case and um i don't know it's really flipping cool so I, i'm going to go back to chat here real quick before i give my two thoughts not so much on the the steam deck itself but things around it we have someone in chat saying they're looking to replace their entire pc with this already so it's definitely cheaper than buying a brand new pc from the top up yeah additionally it's... you don't have to track down a video card for it i mean we've talked about multiple times that i can't buy a video card All right like I'm, no, I'm no using one a 9 right series now. video card still because because that's the best Valve I can do. Valve keeps buying them with... to put in these things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wilson's Corner in chat says, you love your Switch, but I really don't want to be the double buy game sons of the Switch. Hold on, let me, re let me start over again there. <laughs> I love my Switch, but I really don't want to double buy, double buy game games on the, the Switch. Games on the Switch. Okay. I, I, <laughs> the Stream Deck yeah. will... The Steam... Stream... The Steam Deck... Roll the convenience of the Switch in your library, and to me, that's the biggest sell. Combines the uh, convenience of the Switch and your Steam library, and to me, that's the biggest sell. Sorry, reading chat as it's moving, it can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Stealthy Chat and Switch, Stealthy Twitchy in chat says, Gaben is an X at Microsoft where it takes three versions to get it right. Steam Deck is the version three of Valve hardware, in my opinion. I understand where he's coming from because they have the, the cheap proof of concept thing, which I don't want to say cheap, but they have like the proof of concept thing, which is a Steam machine. Then they have their super boutique thing, which is the Valve Index, to where you have to spend a lot of money to buy it. So that way they can get something out that's really high end to get people a hand. And now they have the more mass media pill device. Yep. Although fun fun fact about your uh, talking slip there is the Stream Deck actually was also announced on the same day as the Steam Deck. It's the new um, <laughs> Studio Deck from Elgato. Oh shit. Fun, okay, fun I didn't facts. know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Drop the same day. So. <laughs> I feel so bad for Elgato. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're searching their own market. They to had hell. no problem moving those. So, I really liked how Valve rolled this out because Valve has been or the Valve pre-order thing this. alone makes me so damn excited for it. Because why didn't anybody think of this? Fuck. Yeah. I also appreciate like if, if if Sony was like, "Hey guys, you can buy a PS5, but." In order to appease our most hardcore fans, you need to have an active PSN account that has been online for over a year or has made a purchase in the last two months. I don't even know something. if it needs to be online for over a year, but at least something that's like 90 days, I think, is I just, good. I just, I mean, literally anything. Anything yeah. but we're going to dump them all on the internet. Good luck, losers. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I appreciate how Valve just announced this thing with no teasing fanfare. They didn't go... Come tune in two weeks from now at this time for a special announcement. They just went, hey, here, here is the thing. Yeah, I didn't have to watch four hours of pre-roll for this thing. <laughs> Which is why I'm still convinced that one day, if, if they actually ever do release Half-Life 3, it will just be on the store one day. Yeah, they're not going to say anything. It's just going to be on the front page. Yes, it'll just be on the front. Buy Half-Life 3 now. I'm convinced still that if they were to ever release that game, that's how they would do it based on this shit alone. I still don't think they're doing it, and I am happy that I've read the entire story of Half Life Three since it released all those years ago. But yeah, no, for do. sure. Anyways, let us go, let us know what you think about the Steam Deck in the comments down below. It seems to be getting pretty universal. I don't want to say praise, but people are like, "Yeah, no, this is good." They seem yeah. excited for it. Po po people are mad about it. Buzz seems positive. Let's talk about something we are going to get mad though. I have this segment here of three stories that I just like to call the 10 cent bitch session. Classic Steven talk here. Uh, if, if For those of you who might be new to this channel, I have kept an eye out on the 10 cent situation for years at this point. If you don't know what 10 cent is, they are a Chinese conglomerate that is technically the biggest video game publisher in the world. If you have played a game in the past five years, you have probably played something that Tencent either owns wholly or has a controlling stake or at least a minority stake part of. For example, if you played League of Legends, Riot is owned 100% by this company. Tencent has investments in EA, Activision, and Ubisoft, and they have been buying up a myriad of smaller to medium developers over the past many years. Now, I fear Tencent because any major company in China has to deal directly with the CCP. And this is not what you would consider a friendly, happy government of any kind. 
they are known for putting shit in programs and spying on people and doing horrible things. And yes, you can say the same about America, but that's a different conversation in any country of the world. Tencent specifically is very pernicious and they're growing at an exponential rate. And outside of this show, I see very few people actually talking about how powerful this fucking company is becoming in the gaming influence sphere. I think this is the calmest you've ever talked through this yeah because the show. It, it, <laughs> you're like catching everybody up but don't worry he'll boil over he always fucking does yeah uh rock <laughs> are there partial owners of activists and players. i i literally have a list somewhere on my computer of like 30 to 40 probably even 50 now companies they own <laughs> at least outright or a percentage of or any number of things it is ridiculous they have, how he they have this. less than half of epic because I know just, it's not a controlling interest. Yeah, just like because Tim Sweeney's smart and goes, no, I'm keeping 51% regardless. He's never going to sell that thing. Oh, I didn't know about Discord. Apparently, they have investments in Discord as well. Yeah, dude. Everything. But over the past week, Tencent has for sure bought two companies and is rumored to buy a third one. The third one's a little bit more... Well, we'll get into that when we get to it. Let's start with this first let's, one here. Let's go. Headline from Reuters, Tencent snaps up British video game developer Sumo Digital in a $1.3 billion deal. Sumo Digital, by the way, these are the guys who made Crackdown 3, Hood, Outlaws and Legends, and Sackboy's Big Adventure. By the way, if you're looking up Sackboy's Big Adventure, make sure to type in PS4 game or something like that, because if you just do a blind Google search on that, you're not going to get what you think you're going to get. Uh, Tencent now, already owned... I'm curious, but worried. <laughs> Tencent already owned 8.75% of Sumo digital so this is just one of those things where they're just taking full control of a company they had stake in something else to be weary of by the way small video game developers if tencent has an interest in your company they have an interest in owning you eventually which makes me really concerned for ubisoft because well, i don't they think kind of backed off ubisoft a little bit right we ever gunning for him real hard there for no, no 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 you're getting confused think... with vivendi vivendi oh, was true. gunning for ubisoft really hard and ubisoft took a, uh, a, to fight off that hostile takeover, Ubisoft sold part of Ubi, uh, the, the Gilman brothers sold part of Ubisoft to Tencent to oh, fight off the Vivendi lawsuit. Uh, not a uh, hostile takeover. Fun, fun facts. All right, cool. Let's I go. think, please, by all means, look this up on your own if you're watching this. This has been a couple years. And real I haven't real quick, though, in a while. Sumo, you just mentioned, put together Crackdown 3, mm -hmm. which is not a great video game. No. Hood Outlaws and Legends, which is not a great video game. And Sackboy Big Adventure, which is a fun video game that's not safely Googleable. And they're worth $1.3 billion? Yeah. Because, um, go these guys. Like, <laughs> I know, I know there's all the other stuff you're talking about, but if I was Sumo and they're like, hey, you want to, you want over a billion dollars? I would say, hell yeah. And don't, hey, don't get me wrong. If Tencent were come to this show and offer me a billion dollars for the rest of the game points, I'm fucking taking that money and then I'm creating another video game show where I bitch about Tencent even more. So I mean, just, you, just you putting just that out another, right now. You make another company. Uh, Rock Bogart in chats following up on the Ubisoft thing. He said they got an article from PC Gamer saying Tencent is just a silent partner who cannot license or cannot increase voting rights or ownership and stake in Ubisoft, making a hostile takeover by Tencent impossible. Uh, you can always buy more. That's just it. With their five, I think they own five percent. With the five percent controlling interest that they own, they can't do much with it. But they can buy more, oh, and they can buy bro, more. Bro, you, you buried the lead. You guys, I figured it out, guys. You want to know why Sumo's worth so much? These dudes did Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. They also do a bunch of porting for racing, racing games, Transformed. for sure. Yeah, they do a bunch of porting racing games, and I think Snooker as well, which is bigger where they're from rather than here. Dude, Virtua Tennis? That's not the only company that's been gobbled up by them, though. Tencent also took a majority stake in Stunlock Studios. Now, if you don't know who Stunlock is... They do a game called Battle Right. And if you don't know what Battle Right is, I don't blame you because I've never heard of this game either until today. Right. And it seems like something I would have played. It's a free to play MOBA on Steam. I thought I'd played all of them. Well, you can try about Battle Right. This company this company is also making a game called V Rising, which is supposed to be a vampire survival game. I did see trailers for this making its way around there, but it did not catch my interest. 
However, this is Tencent getting a controlling stake rather than outright purchase of another studio that they had a minority stake in to begin with since 2019. But the big one of all of this Tencent bullshit, the big one right here from Gamasutra, via Gamasutra, I should say. It's from a German website, but... I could, we don't read Ju yeah, German. I, what was that? I said we don't read German. <laughs> uh, Tencent, he headline from Gamasutra. Tencent wants to buy Crisis and CryEngine dev Crytek for over $350 million. So I want to pause real quick here. Yes. Sumo Digital goes for $1.3 billion. Yes. Crytek, <laughs> they're offering $350 million for. There seems to be something wrong with those two numbers when you compare them up together. I'm not saying Crytek is an amazing Name something company. Crytek has done that is not a simulator and is not Crisis. Ready, go. Far Cry. Ready, go. Did you the say very Far first Cry? Far Cry. Okay. <laughs> Took that me was a, a second, really but... long time ago. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just saying that that uh, it just, it just those numbers don't quite add up. But anyways, to the article Sumo itself, has made games this millennium. Is my fair opinion. enough. To the article <laughs> itself, Tencent is attempting to purchase Crisis developer Crytek for over 300 million, according to a new report from German publication BILD. Blid journalist Julian Ropkick says that Tencent wants to buy the game and software developer via a European subsidy and indicated the move has left multiple employees concerned that Crytek could be used by Tencent for non-commercial purposes. Now, what does he mean by that? And I will say that this guy who wrote this article, uh, do you wrote, do your due diligence on him uh, when it comes to his opinions? Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But going back on... Although Crytek is known for working on the franchises like Crisis, Hunt Showdown, The Climb, there, there's three of them right there, David, and developing the CryEngine game engine, the company also supplies military simulation programs to armed forces in the West. I know you just read me those three games, but when I asked you, you didn't know them, so, and you'd read the article before, so I'm still going to just count my point as being made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ropic himself states that multiple employees of Crytek, based in Frankfurt, are afraid that if the company is sold to China, their software will be used for military purposes by the PLA, or China will use its ownership of the company to spy on Western militaries and arms manufacturers using the CryEngine. The reason why he's concerned about that is because something else that Crytek does is supply militaries around the world with simulations. So they're afraid that, uh, let's say, the United States would buy a Crytek simulation. Well, to have an accurate simulation, you need to feed it data on how weapons and vehicles work and then they can take that and make a simulation out of it what this journalists fear what, what people at Crytek is saying is that people at Crytek are afraid China will take those specs that were given in confidentiality by these governments and then use that to counter western power military hardware I'm assuming that all of this stuff is under a shit ton of legal red tape Yes, and if you think that uh, the CCP actually cares about that, okay. Yeah, I'm just, it just depends on where all this data is actually stored. Like, is it all just back at their headquarters or does it have to be? I don't, I don't know. If I'm they own saying. the company, it doesn't matter. They have access to it. I mean, that's part of, that's part of the deal. If you, if you are a company in China, the CCP has access to you, period, end of story. They can just walk in and take whatever they want at any time. Depends on where it is. Uh, your server, if 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 you're, you're, I can promise you they'll route their servers back to there. I mean, they're not just going to keep the Crytek servers there or anything like that. I, it, I mean, that's fair. Now, I don't think I don't want Crytek to get bought by by uh, Tencent for damn sure. But I think the fear that the simulation data will be taken by China is a little bit fear mongering because at the end of the day that's that's where I'm going with this. Like I they fucking I really have it think... already. Yeah, that that shit doesn't matter. They 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 have it already. I could promise you that there's nothing that they're giving Crytek that is going to be damaging if it got leaked out somewhere. Yeah, dude, they can already just look at Facebook. They know everything they need to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh so I I think that in this case Ropek is a little uh, fear mongery at that point, but that doesn't change the fact that I don't want yet another studio to get gobbled up by Tencent, and they've already bought two of them this week. So, and we have gone off about them for years. 
I have said yep. for years, you are right to fear Tencent and that I want more mainstream sources in video games coverage to actually fucking start talking about this. And they just so, don't. I know you often talk about how you dislike Tencent because of the fear aspect. I dislike Tencent because they're a major corporation and I I'm really sick of all video game companies slowly becoming one video game company. That's valid too. Like uh I I if I had to pick between say Tencent and uh Embracer Group, I would pick Embracer Group, but ideally I wouldn't have either one of them. Yeah, that, that's where I'm coming from. I I I would rather just game companies just stay their own game companies, and I understand that that's not necessarily feasible because they need money to do things and it's just shitty. I like it when there's a ton of different companies and they can make games and they all have their own like creative vision and they're not owned by a conglomerate and fuck Activision Blizzard is where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've actually been uh, asked a direct question here from Wilson's Corner. Why would the, Steven, why would the press talk about it? Do you think Tencent doesn't own all major game press outlets? I believe they own Fanbyte. I know that for, a, I don't want to say I know that for a fact. Double check me because I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they own Fanbyte, which is why you'll see Fanbyte get on their high horse about many other political causes in other countries, but don't say shit about Tencent at all. It's very, very easy. Check all the different gaming publication websites on if they've ever made the Winnie the Pooh joke. And if they have, then you're in the clear. <laughs> that is a good, that is a good uh, barometer. To because see if, if at any point they were purchased that page would have been taken down even if it was six years ago. Uh, when it comes down to it, it's because it's not Tencent exactly. It's, it leads into this greater battle against the perniciousness of the Chinese government that just will hammer people financially if they say anything about it. See, I make no money on this at all, so I could care less. I'll bitch about how Xi Jinping looks like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh all day long. But when you have... He like, just needs to start wearing pants. I think that would really help. When you have... Uh, oh, my shirt? God. Who was the... John Cena, like, talking about Taiwan and then spending a week and a half speaking Mandarin, apologizing nonstop. When you have Activision Blizzard taking down uh, the Blitzchung comments about Free Hong Kong, it doesn't matter if Tencent owns a thing in their company or not. They would be doing this anyways because you don't get to do business in China without the CCP's okay. So if you don't do what the CCP wants, you're not getting access to 1.2 billion people to sell your shit to. That means when they make the remake of Red Dawn, it's not the Chinese that are invading, it's for North Koreans. That means when they're making Top Gun Maverick, they have to digitally edit out the plaque of the Taiwanese flag on his jacket. So that's what it goes beyond Tencent, but since Tencent is directly involved in the video gaming aspect, this is the entry point I can make to address this con this this topic, which is why I bring it up all the time because it is important. It's almost like chasing profits above all else is giving power to the thing that you don't like. Do you uh -huh. want me to? I, I can I can answer that I can answer that <laughs> in a way that you want, but I think we might be getting way off. Uh, uh, we no, might be getting way, sure. way, way off. Like, I'm just trying to be a dick because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Uh, but I I don't feel like just like getting into that because I'll go in about how long term gains and all that stuff is going to be really bad in the end. But I don't want to. Uh, we don't need to bog things about that. That. I don't know if that necessarily answers your question. Uh, some of them are owned. Yes, some of them are flat out owned either by Chinese interests or or Tencent or whatever, or Wei Yi or what have you. Some of them were just like, hey, we want to do business in that country, so we won't say anything about it. That's the long and the short of that that question there. David, do you have anything else you want to add? I know this is, just, this is one of those personal crusades that I'm on and that I yeah, just dude. kind of drag you alongside me and... I uh, I just start a timer on my phone. I'll wait for you to be done, and then I check back in later. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, why don't I go ahead and give you this next one, which I'm sure is totally up your alley. Yeah, dude, let's talk about this new video game that I guarantee Tom Clancy would be super happy about. <laughs> Definitely. Tom Clancy's XD Affiant is Thank a free-to-play... Thank you for pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> ...free-to-play, fast-paced arena shooter. Um... X Defiant, 
but the X and the D have a circle around. What What are you guys even doing? They Man, want that what? stupid emoji look because this you whole gotta, thing screams gotta, I'm a hacker in the late 90s. You got to get that Mountain Dew money. Uh, factions from other Clancy games such as Eklon, The Cleaners, Wolves, etc. Et um, it's 6v6. It's Rainbow Six meets Overwatch or Valorant or I don't know, whatever. It's got a pl- closed PC test on August 5th. It It, it could be fun. I don't know, but it doesn't... I don't know why it has to say Tom Clancy, man. This is one of those things I don't get. Like, they have Rainbow Six Siege already, right? Why? Excuse me. Why do we need another arena shooter from them? Why do you need a fast-paced arena shooter when you're the guys that make more strategic tactical shooters? And this weird, like, combination of shit. It's... I, I... The fact that... The Tom Clancy means nothing anymore. It used to kind of mean something in video games. It has no meaning right now. And now they just throw it on the front. Because you have the 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 fucking cleaners from the division, right? Which are the flamethrowers led by like New York City garbage man Joe and like, yeah, man, we're gonna burn down the virus. Fighting third echelon. But third echelon is supposed to be a bunch of spies. Why are they actively out in the streets shooting people down? Fighting John Berthanol's Punisher people from the wolves and one of the ghost recons. It's just why? What kind of weird fucking uh blender did you feel like you need to bl- throw all this into and i can i can almost promise you it's not just going to stick to tom clancy you're going to see uh dead sec from from watchdogs on here more than likely you're going to start seeing this turn into the ubisoft equivalent of their character brawler it's like ubisoft yeah. arena heroes or something like that okay but now that you've put that into the world i actually I'm more in support of the <laughs> Smash Brothers version of an arena shooter. That could be great if you get enough properties in it. But when it's just all this stuff, I'll probably never play this game. Let's be real. Uh, unless it's outrageously fun. And then I will eat my hat and I'll play it anyway because is, I'm a sucker for fun multiplayer video games. It is free to play. It does have its closed PC test coming up in early August if you wanted to give it a shot. Why don't you play this one for me? Why don't you take this bullet? Um, we will see. I don't know if I'm going to because I I really don't like the way it looks, but you'll never know. A Splinter Cell is so dead. Maybe it'll come out and maybe it'll tear up Twitch and this is how we'll get famous. We'll just talk about it all the time. This is one of those (laughs) things I look at and it makes me think Ubisoft might be a little bit in trouble. Uh, not so much this game itself, but, uh, just other things that I'm hearing and this is what they have to show, right? So when they're showing this essentially chase the Overwatch when Overwatch is already over with and done. This game already feels like two or three years too late to catch that train. And then you hear other stories about how like Skull and Bones has actually been in active development since like 2013 and rebooted almost every year. There's a story that came out about that or where the fuck Beyond Good and Evil 2 is. There are these massive money sinks that Ubisoft has and they just refuse to cancel it either because they're stubborn or they might have other deals in place. I don't think Ubisoft is in a healthy position right now. And when I see them releasing something like this, it feels like an attempt at a cash grab to try to float themselves up. So when I say I think Ubisoft might has the potential of being bought by Tencent farther down the line, or at least selling more controlling stake to Tencent, this is what I base that off of. Mm. I do want Beyond Good and Evil 2, though. Joseph Gordon-Levitt said I would get it. I, you know, that. I we don't need Beyond... We need Beyond Good and Evil 2 as much as we needed Mirror's Edge 2. Which is to say, we didn't. Because if people actually liked Beyond Good and Evil 2, they would have made a sequel to it. <laughs> what's, the, what's the... Damn it, I forgot the guy's quote. If people really liked it, they would have bought it at full price. <laughs> oh, God damn, what was his name? The Someone. fucking Days Gone guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. The head of Days Gone. Hey, that's why we didn't get a second Vita. Oh, Everyone no. says they love the Vita. Well, if you fucking love the Vita, you would have you should would have bought it when it was actually a thing, wouldn't you have? Um, I loved the idea of the Vita, and then they decided to put proprietary memory cards in them that cost like four times as much as any other comparable memory card at the time. So yeah, because on Sony, this show it's we still keep your it fucking real. fault. People have rose colored glasses about the Vita, and I love the concept of the Vita, but that fucker was a. Two hundred dollars for a memory card is bullshit. The Vita is fucking awesome if it had a micro SD slot. Right. 
David, let's go ahead and move on because we've I, I've actually taken way too much time up on here. Let's go to a story from Games Radar. Nintendo denies another Switch revision is being planned. Apparently, they got the press release from Gabe and went, fuck this, we're not going to make it. <laughs> Earlier on July 19th, a Nintendo corporate Twitter account issued the statement below. The statement directed, both at the company's audience and their investors, denies the Switch OLED will have an increased profit margin over the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch and also denies that a Nintendo, another Nintendo Switch revision is being planned. Now, this is in response to a report that came out last week saying that while Nintendo is charging 50 bucks more for the OLED version, it's only costing them 10 bucks to manufacture. In combined, there have been rumors that, hey, there's going to be another Switch revision planned. Uh, they're speculating that because of the global chip shortage that they decided to release the OLED version, but the Switch Pro is still coming. Don't worry about it. The reason why I wanted to bring this story up specifically, David, is because it is so rare for a company to actually come out and go, no, this isn't happening. You normally get the, we don't comment on rumors and speculation, or they say nothing. This is Nintendo straight up telling you all out there, there is no Switch Pro coming, and they didn't really jack up the price on the Switch OLED version. Okay. And they, they put both those states in there. Like I said, you just don't see that upfrontness with companies too often. I mean, we were going on about the blue box thing before, about how Sony could solve all of this speculation bullshit by just saying, this isn't what you think it is. Yes, that's true. But they didn't. So, yeah. So, credit to Nintendo where credit's due. Thank you for just telling people your dreams of a Switch Pro that is beyond the OLED edition are not happening. At least not on the table anytime soon. Yep. Uh, most of the people that were waiting for the Switch Pro just said, ah, oh, well, that just means they pushed it back a year or two. Yeah, no, it's not happening. Not happening. And everybody that doesn't care still doesn't care. Yeah, buy, buy, buy a Steam Deck. It's going to be great. Someone will hack that son of a bitch to play Switch games. You just watch. Um, that's what I'm really curious. That's what I'm really curious about is what the I, homebrew shit that comes out for the Steam Deck. Yeah, I don't think it's even going to be hard. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you... I don't think you have to hack it to do that. I'm pretty sure Probably it's going to be You'll be able to do that natively. <laughs> Some, something tells me that Gabe Newell doesn't care. He sold it. He, he got his money. He's like, eh. Yeah, well. He, he tends to have a very uh, lax uh, stance on things like that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Why don't you leave us off on the next story here, David? Let's talk about something super weird. In a report from CNET, Netflix to add video games on its service at no added cost in the next year, report says. So Netflix, that huge video streaming service that mm -hmm. uh, was originally created by a guy that got really fucking mad at Blockbuster because he had a $40 in late fees, so he decided to make his own version of renting videos, is going to expand into video games. And it's not going to cost you any more. If you're already paying whatever tier gets you video games. I mean, that sounds widening, good at first. Widening from its bedrock business of TV shows and movies as the world's biggest subscription video service, according to a report by Bloomberg. Netflix confirmed on Wednesday that it had hired a former Oculus, EA, and Zynga executive, Mike Verdu, as vice president of games development. A spokeswoman declined to comment beyond his hiring. The games will be available as though they're a new genre on the service, and Netflix doesn't plan to charge extra for them, according to Bloomberg, citing an unnamed person familiar with the matter. Um, looking into this, I know that they're talking about using, like, the... Oh, dang, what's that show? The, the Banner Snatch from... Black Mirror. Black Mirror. It's kind of the first idea. I don't know if you know this, but you remember when Minecraft had that... Uh, story mode? Story Story game. Yeah, they put that, that up played... on like Netflix or Amazon. Yeah, or that was like that, that was just straight up on Netflix. Yeah, like you could go through that whole thing because you just make decisions, right? It's like a who the hell did The Walking Dead? Who are those guys? I can't think of. Thank you. It's like a Telltale game. You just make decisions, and that is what you should expect from this. By the way, I've seen some people saying, "Oh my God, it's going to be like Stadia." No, it's not. It's going to be at. It's going to be at best like maybe a couple Netflix max... isn't 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 selling you a controller. You're, whatever yeah. you're playing, you're going to be playing with your television remote. It's going to be at best like match three games you find on your iPhone or things like Telltale games. That's what you're going to see on this, especially if they're not going to charge you anything extra. However, that said, be on the lookout for the stealth increase in Netflix pricings right before this launches out so they can say, we didn't charge you extra for this. We just naturally rose our price. Yep, we'll see. Although, quick uh, flashback to the Steam Steam Deck. Uh, Rock Bogart chat mentions that emulators will run natively run it because he runs RetroArch on Linux whole day and it's just running uh steam os which is a custom build linux good game good guy gabe 
Yep. The next two stories actually come from our audience, so thank you very much for that. If you want to contribute a story to Game Points, feel free to join the Discord and put it under Gaming News. First one up here is from Wilson's Corner. XCOM Legends gets a surprise launch on mobile, but it's a free-to-play gotcha game, and this is via Metro UK. 2K has soft launch a new XCOM mobile game in Asia, but so far there's no sign of a Western launch or XCOM 3. The game is only an Android release so far, and rather than series creators for Axis, rather than being made by series creators for Axis, it's done by a previously unknown developer, Iridium Starfish, who may be an internal 2K studio. XCOM Legends appears to be a free-to-play game with ads and what looks like to be microtransactions and gotcha elements. Technically, the game's been unknown about for almost a year after fans on Reddit initially mistook the leak for some kind of scam. Uh, that, that's the favorite, favorite part of the movie because people, the XCOM fans heard about this and went, no, that's clearly stupid. Why would they do that? <laughs> Sounds like an XCOM fan thing to uh, say. Kotaku ate some shit on this recently because they wrote a story with the headline, like essentially saying the game looks like shit in the headline and they got into some trouble online. People were mad online about it. Take that to the bank as you will. Which is weird because it does look like shit. <laughs> it does look like shit. But honestly, I don't You just care. can't say that out loud. Yeah. I don't care about this. This is not released for a Western audience. This is done by a side team, not the main, like, for access team. This mm-hmm. was released for an Asian market only where these games thrive. Cool. I'm yeah. fine with it. It's just, it's got the XCOM name on it, and it looks like it has nothing really to do with XCOM besides, I guess, there's aliens in it. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now why they stealth launched it. Two words. Diablo Immortal. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you all got phones, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so the, the, that's why they still... That's why they're like, eh, just release it. Don't tell anyone about it. It'll order spread. So, I was told months ago to expect more XCOM sometime this year. And while this might be what that person is referring to, I don't think it is because certain details that they told me sync up. I'm not, I can't tell you who told me this. Uh, I will say they're not part of the dev team. But my source does have knowledge into this. Uh, but they persons wouldn't necessarily know the undisclosed details. that are close to the matter yeah. told Stephen to tell you. Yeah, I know. I, I get this not be the thing that strong, he heard about this one time. <laughs> strong shades of my uncle at Nintendo here. I totally, I totally get that. Uh, but specifically, th- this does not. They did say that. Hey, expect some XCOM news this year, and it could have morphed into this because they're not in active development on they're not and they're not on, on any development team my source here is uh but they do know stuff uh so this could be it but i don't think it is based on other things they told me just keep that in mind if you're waiting for xcom 3 announcement i would say your best uh <laughs> i would say you your best your bet at for that. Falls on vacation <laughs> yeah yeah I, I would say your best bet on hearing anything uh. new on xcom 3 would be the game awards when they happen later this year yeah, we'll see. And they still might not happen. I'm not willing to bet. That, I'm not willing to make that call. I'm just saying that is what I've heard. Take take from that what you will. We have one more story, David. And uh, this is a this, this is, is a pretty great. good one from a place that we've never had a video game source from. Uh, well, one it's from one of our listeners, one of one, our one of one our, our listeners slash viewers, Mike No Play. So thank you very much. And it's from the UK <clears throat> Defense Journal. I yes. love that we're able to sort this place. Your your go-to source for video game related love news. Love it. From the headline, classified Challenger tank specs leaked online for a video game. This is devotion. This is why I doubt that China needs to buy Crytek to get this information. Cuz some <laughs> some some freaking nerd playing War Thunder was able to find it just fine. <laughs> Yeah, so a, a person identifying as a Challenger 2 commander, which is a tank, has posted a classified document online in order to improve the accuracy of the devi- design of said tank in the game War Thunder. Um, this quote-unquote commander posted specific excerpts from a Challenger 2 AESP, which is the Army Equipment Support Publication, which is kind of like a user manual for a tank, to show game developers that they didn't model it correctly. It's understood that excerpts from the document had their UK restricted label crossed out and a stamp of unclassified added, as well as having various parts fully blanked. Um, (laughs) Now, the developer for War Thunder flat out refused to deal with the apparently still classified documents in a quote from their community manager. Before any discussion, handling, or bug report are even made, proof of this document's declassification will be required, as well as where it was sourced from. 
If it is declassified, it should be available to the public. Last time such a document was shared that was claimed to be unclassified, it was in fact still classified and was confirmed that it should never have been shared. We make it very clear that we will not handle any source material unless it's publicly available and fully declassified with the rights to prove that. If I had a nickel for every time someone said private tank schematics to a video game developer, I would have two nickels, which is yeah, not apparently a lot, it's a... <laughs> but still weird that it's what's, happened What's twice. more surprised to you, that this has <laughs> happened or this has apparently happened before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, additionally, a forum moderator posted, we have written confirmation from MOD that this document remains classified. By continuing to disseminate it, you are in violation of the Official Secrets Act, as stated by the warning on the cover of the All document. Right, pause no real quick. Yes. The Official Secrets Act doesn't mean shit to me because I'm not a UK citizen. Right? I could talk about this all the time. So go fuck yourself, Ministry of <laughs> Defense. I don't Official go to the UK Secrets school. Act. I didn't throw a bunch of tea into the water so King George could tell me what I can and can't leak online. I don't think that's the guy in charge anymore. <laughs> anyway, so the Official Secrets Act <laughs> is like think. this piece of paper that says you're not supposed to do this and it can carry up to a 14-year prison sentence if you're prosecuted. Um, going on to the post of this, you're already aware. As a service person, you've signed a declaration that you understand the act and what actions it compels you to take. Every time you post this, you place us especially under any UK citizens is hot in hot water is the warning. So hopefully states that unauthorized retention of a protected document is an offense. So <laughs> long story short, some dude on the internet sent tank schematics to a video game company to make their tanks more accurate. And they said, we can't use this because so, it's super fucking illegal. Let me, let me ask you this question now. What is more outrageous? The fact that someone's so obsessed with this game, he's risking a 14 year old prison secret, a sentence to leak documents to them to modify a tank correctly. Or the fact that he went, no, don't worry, and he wrote unclassified over all the top secret stuff. Went, it's okay, it's legit, I promise. So I choose to think of it another way. I choose to think that he is a true patriot of his nation, <laughs> and that the challenge yeah, is his nation's America, game, not the UK, and he's leaking their is, secrets out. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Follow, follow me along. This dude loves his country, and he loves this tank, and this video game does not show his tank off and give it the justice it deserves. This tank should be super overpowered. So he just wants to get his tank off. So that his tank could be the best tank. That in this be. man's defense, if I saw an American flag in a video game and it had 48 stars on there, I'd be pissed off that they didn't include 49 on there. I don't know. That's not how many there are on there. I'll so be in the cold, not. dead ground before I recognize Missouri as a state. <laughs> I was like, which one are you mad about? <laughs> David, uh, we do, that, that does it for the news. We do have some delays in upcoming events, though, so let's go ahead and roll things with this real quick. Uh, before I do that, though, apparently Wilson's Corner, who lives in the UK, sorry I doxed you in, in, by giving the nation that you're in, my friend, uh, Oof. says, actually, the UK does have US extradition rights for breaking the OSA. That being said, I doubt they would enforce it over talking about it. Uh, Rock Bogard's also upset that I got to the census quote before he did. I don't like I don't like this whole extradition rights for breaking the OSA shit. That bothers me. I don't like that at all. We have to change. But do you that. have to be? But do you have to be a UK citizen to break the OSA? Because I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. Right. I feel like they can't just come over and arrest an American. Yeah, I got a, I got rights in America. I'm an American citizen. I can go to any country and say, "Don't you know who I am? I'm an American citizen. Just do whatever I want." <laughs> That's how that that's, works, right? That's not how that works, but I don't know. All I right. don't know. I'm too dumb. Don't trust me for legal advice or financial advice or really just any kind of advice besides which video games may or may not suck. I recommend you speak as a me. lawyer before you break any international laws, except those from Germany. <laughs> David, we do have a series of delays currently happening right now, and uh, let me go through these real quick. One, Rambo 6 Extraction, formerly known as Rambo 6 Quarantine until everyone went to quarantine for a year and a half, is now delayed for January 22nd. Another Ubisoft game, Riders Republic, has been delayed for September 2nd to October 28th. By the way, I am hearing expect that to get delayed again. So Fine. do not, uh, from, from what I am being told, once again from the, from a different but same level of source as my girlfriend from Canada, as it were, or my uncle from Nintendo, expect for this to actually be sometime next year. Uh, 40k Dark Tide has been delayed. That sucks. No! Uh, spring 2022. And Resident Evil Reverse delayed to some time in 2022. Just sign Outbreak Battle 3. I don't, I'm not losing any sleep over it. Yeah, Dark Tide, however, I, I, I mean, take the time you want. I want that game to be great, but I'm really looking forward to playing Dark Tide. 
Vermintide's great. I hope Dark Tide's great. We have one upcoming event worth a damn this week, and that is EA Play Live on July 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, they have come out and kind of set expectations, as I'm loving more and more companies do. They said that this will be a short presentation, so I expect no more than 30 minutes. Your mileage may vary. It could be a little bit longer. It could be a little bit shorter. And also, not to expect anything about Skate, no Star Wars, and nothing on Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Which Okay, means so if you would like a 30-minute update on the next Madden, the mm -hmm. next NBA game, the mm -hmm. next NHL game, mm -hmm. and the next... What else do they make? Well, they also football? make bat Battlefield, so I'd expect some stuff about the upcoming Battlefield 6 on there. Uh, a couple they don't of make... indie oh. EAs. FIFA. Yeah, FIFA is the only one. Uh, there you go. I'd expect probably a couple of indie games from EA uh, EA Originals, I think, is that indie studio, the indie publisher, uh, publishing arm of EA that they do. And the big one, hopefully, the rumor is, we'll see if this pans out, we are going to have the Dead Space revival, reboot, remake, whatever it may be, announced as this as well, which is the main reason why I am going to be watching it. But I hope they announce that they're adding AFC Richmond to FIFA. I don't even know what AFC Richmond is. It's a Ted Lasso joke. That's okay. Don't worry okay. about it. Okay. Ted, Ted. <laughs> I, I know the name Ted Lasso. <laughs> Damon, it's a television show. It's quite funny. Either way, this thing isn't happening until Thursday. Yes. I need stuff to be occupied with between now and then because god damn if I'm not just terminally bored all the time and I can only paint Constantly. so many balls. Well, it sounds like you need new releases. I do. Fun need thing about releases. new releases is they release anytime between now and Friday. So I don't know about holding you over till Thursday exactly, but let's try. Don't don't uh, first don't, don't 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 break the uh, bit, David. Don't break the bit. Everything that's on this list bit. comes out today. <laughs> okay, that's I don't know if that's true or not. It's definitely not. No, uh, first I... up, we've got Crisis Tales <laughs> on the PlayStations, the Xboxes, Switch, and PC. And yes, all four Xboxes. Uh, this is an action-adventure JRPG that is an indie love letter to JRPGs of the past with a fun new perspective. Peer into the past, act in the present, and watch as your choices dynamically change the future all on one screen as you play. So this you remember looks that, amazing. Remember that horror game by the Bloober guys that we talked about? The Medium. The medium? It was supposed to be this big deal because you're you're simultaneously taking place in two two timelines or whatever. You're doing that, but with a JRPG, so you can see what used to happen, what's going to happen later. You're fighting the future. I don't know. Sometimes you're fighting the future's future. It looks pretty tight. <laughs> this Let's this look. looks this looks really cool. I'm, I'm definitely into this. I will likely be streaming this sometime this week. There you go. Also up this week, Pokemon Unite comes out on Switch. Are you ready to be excited, Steven? Because I know you're going to love this one. Yeah, because you know Pokemon Unite is a free-to-play multiplayer online battle arena video game this is what developed you by Teamy Studio Group and published by the Pokemon Company. And my friend, <laughs> do you know who owns Teamy Studio Group wholeheartedly 100% of? Oh, oh really? Tencent. Oh my this god, no wonder why you were split... laughing so hard. I'm this gonna... game is split into two halves of multiple control points each. Players score points for their team by defeating AI wild Pokemon, referred to as caching in the game, and move towards one of the control points to score goals. It's literally any MOBA you've ever played, but with Pokemon. And they level up, and you get to pick your Pokemon. And for some reason, you get to customize your trainer, even though they don't seem to make any kind of appearances in the actual game once you're playing it. But that's okay, because it's a Pokemon MOBA, and you can play it this week for free hilarious god damn that that has everything i fucking hate rolled up into one title <laughs> i know it it's has like the your least favorite video it has game. a genre i don't care about <laughs> it's a mobile game that's being ported over to switch or the equivalent of i can't say that it does that thing where it announces like five different genres and slaps them together and it's fucking owned by tencent oh, god damn multiplayer online battle arena is always what moba has made that's not that's not five genres slammed together that's just one genre I heard, like, free-to-play and a bunch of other things, like, thrown in there. Free-to-play's not a genre. I guess it kind of is. Never mind. Uh, also, at this week, Last Stop hits the PlayStations, the Xbox, the Switch, and PC. This is a story-rich sci-fi adventure game. Single-player, third-person adventure set in present-day London, where you play as three separate characters whose worlds collide in the midst of a supernatural crisis. This game looks kind of interesting if you're into that more narrative-based... I believe it's from the same quantum, developers quantum as dream Virginia... Feeling. Yes, it which is was really good. Game. Yes, so take a look if you're into those narrative adventure games. 
Urban Trial Tricky hits PS4, Xbox One, PC. For some reason, they don't have the next-gen consoles listed on the release, but I'm willing to bet it's on both. Casual racing game that very much looks like a Trials game. If you've never seen those, those are the kind of 2D slash 3D motorcycle racing games where you go to the left and you try not to die. But this one, you, you can turn around and do tricks. So it looks like a combination of the Trials games with like a skate or a Tony Hawk. Fast post gameplay, color for visual, smooth controls. Get your trials on. Warhammer 40k Battle Sector is something you'll probably play. PlayStation, Xbox, PC, turn-based strategy game. Not the battle yet. scale game of turn-based strategy set in the 40k universe that takes you to the battlefields of the 41st millennium. This game is Blood Angels v. Tyranids. Choose your side. It's got a 20 mission campaign plus other modes, including hot seat, asynchronous multiplayer, online multiplayer, skirmishes, all that other fun stuff. And yeah. Big big groups of yeah. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. Furthermore, the uh, Blood Angels and Tyranids fight uh, is infamous in 40k lore because it's where the Blood Angels teamed up with the Necrons and kind of broed out to fight the Tyranids. A pairing that everyone but the author who created that universally derides. <laughs> Classic. Um, <clears throat> where the snow settles. It's Xbox and PC this week. This is a cinematic, atmospheric adventure game that looks pretty neat, actually. It's a game about loss, growth, and the supernatural. Gentle and undemanding game mechanics allow for escapism into a beautiful and desolate world filled with secrets. Um, I got some major journey vibes looking at this game, so please take a look if that kind of atmospheric, just adventure, chill out, relax game appeals to you. This might be right up your alley. Orcs Must Die 3 hits PlayStation, Xbox, PC. This is the, I guess what, third game in the Orcs Must Die series, which has maintained the status of a fun video game franchise, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think Tower this Defense, was Stadia strategy. exclusive for its first year of life. I was going to say, I feel like I've talked about this game a few times, but now it's actually available everywhere else. It's a third-person shooter where you're, you are brutally murdering orcs the entire time. Um, you... you live in a world where there's portals and orcs come through the portals and you kill them and that's how this game works it's always been multiplayer it's just kind of dumb fun i like the other two games so take a look if that sounds fun to you finally on the list something that i looked at and legitimately bought about six minutes before this episode oh no started. shit death's door hits pc this week it is an action rpg that is published by devolver digital that looks fucking incredible yeah reaping souls of the dead and punching a clock might get monotonous but it's honest work for a crow the job gets lively when your assigned soul is stolen you must track down a desperate thief to a realm untouched by death where creatures grow far past their expiry this game looks amazing it's from the same group that made titan souls which is a damn good video game and it is a Zelda-like. That's right, baby. Yeah, this does it look is, really cool. It's an action adventure RPG that's got like dungeons and puzzles and combat mm. and that kind of top-down isometric thing. And you're playing as a crow with a sword. And it looks great. And the music sounds good. And I think I'm ready to end the show so I can go play this damn thing. Yeah, I will <laughs> likely be streaming this this week as well. David, that does it for new releases. That means it also does it for the show. This has been Game Points episode 272, and thank you all for showing up. If you like what you saw here and you want to support the stream, you guys know what to do. Follow the notifications turned on, bits, subs, especially if you're sitting on that freebie from Amazon Prime, likes, all that good stuff. You, like I said, you guys know what streamers want. If you want to be a part Bring of the Greater notification Game Points, bill. <laughs> if you want to smash the like button. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want to be part of the Greater Game Points community, you can join our Discord. Link provided down there. Where you can also contribute stories to this show and know when we go live. And just general Tom Foolery as well. You can follow the show on, on Twitter at Game Points PC. Myself, Stephen Brown, at CapitalistPig21. And David there at PowSife underscore Satori. Thank you all for showing up. And until next time, we're out of here. <laughs>